Okay, this is the uh, March 19th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. We're being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later on by residents and the public. First item on the agenda is the meeting minutes for uh, March 12th. Is everybody going over the minutes? Yeah. Any changes or additions? I thought yeah. they look good. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. Uh, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Next item on the agenda, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $467,325. Uh, and that's a large uh, amount because we have a quarterly payment to uh, Frontier Regional of $319,010 as, as uh, one of our quarterly payments. Uh, we have a payroll warrant for $102,844 and a payroll deduction warrant of $25,299. I'll make a motion that we accept those warrants. Do I have a second? Second it. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Next item, meetings attended by select board members. Bob, you want to go first? And so I wasn't alone at all of these, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but I went to three, basically, meetings last, last week. Uh, on Monday, we had our select board especially early, and we did that because our Senate, State Senator Adam Hines was holding a, um, a rural schools forum up at Mohawk, uh, Mohawk High School, where he went to high school and he commented on the long periods of time he had sweated heavily in the gymnasium where they held the meeting. Um, and he did a very good job running the meeting. Um, and, and it was, um, you know, it was, uh, Steve Kulik was there and some people from Desi were there. And, uh, I wouldn't say that they solved the problems of rural schools, but Adam walked away with some good action items that he wanted to work on. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it was hard for Adam to keep it becoming just a complaint session of people complaining about things. And he, was, he did a good job trying to focus it on concrete things that they could talk about. Okay. And he left it open to having another meeting as well. Yeah. I, th I thought he did a good job. The other thing that was interesting about the meeting were, I think every, almost every one of the candidates running for Steve Kulik's seat were there. So there was a great many uh, okay. of, of the many candidates. And, but there was probably a hundred and some people there. They, I mean, okay. it, was, it was well attended. Um, and then Tuesday we had a Frontier uh, budget meeting and Thursday we had a Conway Grammar School budget meeting. And so we'll be talking about that again today. Right. Robert? No. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, I attended the um, Massachusetts Municipal Association Legislative Breakfast on Friday in Gardner. And uh, the hot topic was uh, marijuana and what's happening with the uh, Cannabis Control Commission and how things are going to roll out. Um, other things mentioned included uh, the uh, funding formula for schools, which is a topic that always comes up, and um, certainly uh, Chapter 90, whether we're going to get more money for Chapter 90 coming on board here. So that was what happened at that meeting. Um, next item on our agenda, citizens' concerns. I don't see any citizens here, so I guess we don't have any concerns. Next item, we have uh, Ken. Ken and uh, Joe Colucci, come on in. We have some dogs that have been loose. Again. So, again. Numerous yes. times. So, uh, Joe and I had spoken about this actually just last week. Friday. Yeah. yeah. And um, since our speaking, uh, Joe had another complaint just this weekend, so this may be a, a meeting that was not really needed after all. So we're going to um, issue a violation of the bylaw. Okay. Uh, we, we met originally on this complaint, was it almost a year ago? Last February. For the last February, and, and things have been pretty good up until like the recent two weeks to a month. Mm, it's no. been off and on. It's been better, okay. but not good. Once or twice a month, um, 
supposedly there's a person down there who runs a daycare and they've had at almost accidents in the winter with icy roads and dogs chasing cars and stuff. It's periodic. It's days go by, nothing happens, and then for two days, every evening, they're out. Uh, I mean, like, they're not paying attention to things. Well, we, we keep being told they're going to address this by doing a fence. I advised them back in January when I got a call on a complaint that um, so we could put up a fence to at least put out cable runs. Oh, no. Apparently, he didn't, didn't take that. On February 13th or 23rd, something like that, I talked to him, and he, he said that now that he's retired and has more time, he's going to keep an eye on things. It's not going to happen anymore. And um, he did come in and actually license his dogs, which without any prodding. Okay. But All right. Well, now that he's retired, maybe maybe we'll see some some more uh, attention to the dogs. No. And uh, according to the the bylaw, it's uh, twenty dollars for the first fine and fifty dollars thereafter. That's somewhat less than the general non-criminal disposition ticket, which is 50, 100, 150. Mm -hmm. um, so we may want to re revisit that at some time in the future to have more of a progression and, and getting higher. Um, the first ticket is only $20, so. Um, but possibly $20 per dollar. Would that be $20 per animal? Per incident, yes. Yeah, so. Per incident or per animal? Well, each animal, I think, would... Yeah. I, I think we, we can say that it, it's... Uh, there were three dogs in the that picture. Each animal is an incident. I, I would be comfortable doing that. I, I think that makes sense. Sure. <laughs> but Joe, in your picture, you said, I mean, I mean, your comment was they're over here digging up a yard every day. Well, uh, yeah. I don't know that for sure. Uh -huh. I'm not there, but that's what these people have said. Yeah, yeah. Was, they haven't done the People that own the property said that. Not yeah. yeah. They, oh, well, they, but they, he they, they, they complained to me once before, uh -huh. back in September. I mean, people should be encouraged, or we could encourage them, or, you know, to say something w when it really happens. My dealing with them in January was the same neighbor. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to issue tickets, three tickets for three dogs, first offense, and we're going to talk to them and tell them to tighten things up. Mm -hmm. He said last year he was going to build a fence. He also has told me this year, as soon as the weather clears, he's building a fence. Okay. I don't know. And, and again, as, as uh, Chief Lumet said, he, he doesn't have to build a fence. A cable run would allow them to be outside mm -hmm. right, and would be a lot less expensive, a lot more manageable. So... Um, he does have to have shelter also for the dogs, though. If he does a cable run, if you're going to leave them outside, they have to be able to get out of the weather. Right, right. And obviously, water. Well, again, rather than putting up an entire fence, I think that's you know uh, an option that that. Uh, well, it's certainly a viable alternative. <laughs> yeah, he could look at. Mm -hmm. Okay. And any other comments? All right, I would, so if we you know get a chance to, to talk to the owner of this century that picture. I tell him, next time you see him out, just let me know again. I just yeah, keep by the ball there. rolling. I left him a notice at the door today. I stopped by there, but they keep weren't Keep the home. ball rolling. So we're going to get to the bottom of this. Right. right. And, so, and uh, please uh, let them know to make sure to say the date uh, and, uh, if possible, the time and the location. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the email you got included the location. The email I got did not include the location. So okay. it's, it'll be important. Uh, that'll be important. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda, fiscal year uh, 2019 budget. Do we have uh, much to do on this, Tom? No. Uh, I, uh, we can, I have an update. You have the items. I, I do you want to do this with the Finance going Committee? Over that with the Finance right. Committee. We'll do yeah. this with the Finance Committee, and then when we get to that. Okay. We'll uh, do the same thing with the annual town meeting budget. Okay. Uh, with the warrant, yeah. Yeah, with the warrant. All right. Um, next item that's on the agenda is uh, Veit's Garage, possible town purchase of that. We're going to table that because we don't have all the information we need, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm still uh, sort of going back and finding. Uh, I'm working with the uh, 
Franklin Regional Council of Governments mm -hmm. to look at their Brownfields program. It does not look as though it's something that the town would be able to do, um, but uh, th there are um, different phases of investigation that uh, that uh, Mr. Veit could do if he wanted to um, prepare the property um, as as thoroughly as possible for selling it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Because he's still the well, owner. Well, you talked about having to come in that for the possibility of the town purchasing your property. What, what's our? We haven't even discussed what our our uh, thoughts on the property or if it's even usable by the town. So I called Everett and talked to him about coming in today, and we talked for a while, and then he he, he really decided that they're still in the midst of talking to a lawyer about what what their options are. So he said they want to finish that. So he said he would rather not come in today. Yeah, and, so, and we have a lot more investigation to do before we yeah. consider what, what's happening with that because we don't, we don't know the condition of the property. No, but I mean, why do we, we don't feel that we have a need for the property, why are we pursuing it any further? Well, people have come here and to let us know that they want we've to sell the property. We've had other people come in and want to sell property, right. and we've had our right. discussions mm -hmm. right. about so, so that before was, anything went on about it. You know so that, that, that was that, why we were going to talk. That's one of the things we have to decide is, do, do we want it? Do we need it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I would okay. think you'd do that right up front before you pursue anything. Is there a need for the town for that? Then let's pursue it. Well, again, he's still figuring out the conditions so, right. uh, under yeah. which he would... Right even offer it in the first place. So we don't even know that right. it's available. Available yet, so. It, it may be, so. Okay. okay. Um, all right, next item on the agenda is our joint meeting with the Finance Committee um, over at the yeah. town hall. Uh, what I would do is to skip to items not anticipated, if we could, because I think we can go, well, actually, the, at least the first one we can cover here, I think, uh, uh, Mr. Hawks is going to be over at the uh, town right. hall probably about seven and a quarter past. All right. How about uh, representative for the next um, Mohawk Trail Woodland Advisory Committee meeting? Rob, Bob, well, so, you want to? So uh, Beth wrote and to yeah. Tom and she wrote to me too. I, maybe everybody, I don't know, to say that she wasn't going to be able to make it mm -hmm. to the next meeting. And and there's been a lot of talk about the Woodlands Partnership. You know, There's been a lot of articles in the paper and a lot, of, a lot of them against it. A lot of people against it, some people for it. Um, so And so Beth felt it was important that we go. And, mm -hmm. and, she, and she couldn't make it, so she was just saying maybe somebody from the select board would like to go in her place. And, and you would and like to do that? I would love to go, yes. And, and, but I think I could go anyway. I mean, you know, I assume it's an open yes. meeting. Anybody could go. But as um, a but, representative But I could of the go town. and represent the town. So yeah, I think that's a good but, idea. Okay, so okay. what we thought we ought to talk about it, if you wanted to go, or you know, we could we could oh, decide fine. who wants to go. So uh, I would I would be fine with you representing us. Great, well, sure. Okay, all right. I don't think we need to vote on that. Well, you're not making any comments mm -hmm. that and, and I wrote to Peggy Sloan about about somebody coming in best place, and she said if you want to send somebody else, that would be fine. Sure, she, she yeah. runs the meeting at Furcock. Yeah, yeah, okay. And I have a really short update. All right, so let's do your update next. Um, just one item about the uh, Energy Committee. The uh, State Department of Energy Resources has just come out with its new SMART program and uh, is running a webinar tomorrow from 2 to 3. I've let the Energy Committee know. I forwarded the email to them. Uh, but please let me know if you'd like the registration information for that as well. I, I would. Yeah. I would okay. too. Yeah. Okay. Conway will be well represented. Um, and for departments, we have received the signed state contract for the accessibility work at the town hall, and I've asked the highway superintendent and our resident plumber for a timeline. All invoices must be in by June 30th. Okay. All right. Uh, and finally, the Maya Claims Department is looking at the oil spill. I'm fairly confident it's covered through our umbrella policy, though as you know, we've used quite a bit of coverage recently, especially with the tornado. So I'm also fairly confident it will drive up our premium for <laughs> FY20. That said, 
Yep. Yeah, it what happens. Uh, thanks yep. for that good That's news, Tom. <laughs> Anytime you claim, make a claim, of course, your policy cost. Okay. Um, well, we might as well go through concerns of the selectmen. Do we have any concerns? Not me. No concerns. Okay. Mail. Let me see what we have in the mail. Okay, we have um, a letter from Frontier Regional and Union 38 School Districts um, requesting a new tractor, a John Deere 1025R subcompact utility tractor. Cost of the tractor is $35,000 and Conway's share would be about 16.22% or $5,677. Um, we're looking, they're looking for a, um, a warrant article on this. And I have language from them for that. Just came in late this afternoon. Okay. Didn't right. we already officially close the warrant? Yes, we did. It yeah. would have to be opened up for this item. We can, uh, that we can said, um, I don't think I officially told them that we were going to close the warrant at some particular date. So mm -hmm. they, uh, they might not have known that I will. Be sure to do that next year. But you know, the school's budget always comes in late. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's it's. I think it's always going to be awkward. If they were doing their job, I'm going to make the mm -hmm. statement. It's not going to make me any friends with it. If Frontier School Committee was doing their job, they'd had that built into the maintenance department. Yes, it would be uh, good, and I, and this may have been one of the things that they were floating for that uh, three million dollar bond that they. It uh, was, and they, the yeah. one they got word from our committee, the committee that I'm on, that we don't want to see things like that funded through a bond. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's why they're coming out the way they are now. And that was six weeks ago. That's, uh, you know, right? <laughs> well, the the, the meeting they decided this at was January 9th. Yes. So it was over two months ago. Yeah. They should have, you know, gotten this to us sooner. Yeah. But um, you know, we can we can open the warrant and uh, add this um, to it if we want. What's that going to do to your equation? I I, I, I had that's in the budget update uh, sheet that I'll okay. go over. Uh, you can look at it now. I'll also go over it with the uh, with the finance yeah, we can we can table that till the finance committee. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll bring we'll bring that up at the finance committee. It's it's just relatively small. Now. We got a letter from um, okay Northeast Agricultural Tech Specialized Agricultural Technologies. Um, this is probably something that we should refer to the uh, Agricultural Commission. Yes, well, they, it's, a, it's, it's a letter requesting a meeting with uh, the chair of the select board to talk about citing a production facility in Conway. Marijuana production? Production, production of? Marijuana. Yeah. I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we have, we have a moratorium. Um, interestingly enough, yeah, cultivation of med medical marijuana. Okay. Um, at, the, at the meeting on Friday, uh, fully 200 out of the 351 municipalities have either voted for a moratorium or to ban uh, any commercial establishments altogether. So, um, you know, this is uh, actually something that we, we can't discuss now because we we're, we're have a moratorium until the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I had heard that, it might go along with this for me, it doesn't, uh, from other sources in town that it's probably in the, there's a large land clearing going on right now in the town of Conway for either production of something like that or something to do with solar. But it's a very large chunk what? of land being scalped. Where? And every tree being taken off it, and it's on a hillside out in Poland. Oh, huh. somebody's private property. Somebody's private property, but they say it's, it's larger than a normal, if it was for a solar field, it's, it's much larger than a normal solar field would be. Hmm. So I don't know. And they don't have a lot of electricity out there. I, mean, I don't know what we're going to. It's going to be two, it's only, it's two it's only, power. I, I, 
people we all know well discussed it from yesterday and uh, they didn't have all the details but they've heard about it at least it's already in the works and going i guess mm -hmm. interesting what it is for solar field or future marijuana growing i have no idea normally nobody wants to put a commercial solar field in without three-phase power which yeah, is you why can't, you can't you can't do it right which is why it appears attractive but this is way up on main polar road almost and, up the top of the mountain there you used can't. to be three-phase power there but i think they've taken it all out and rewired it for just well you, phase. you couldn't connect yeah without three-phase power. yeah so i don't know i guess we'll have to wait and hear more about it all right if we do hear more about it all right, next item, uh, we got a... Uh, I, haven't heard I haven't heard anything, though. No. Got a letter from uh, Mass Bar Association News uh, about um, offering free legal advice to Western Mass residents by phone on April the 12th. So would you, would you get this Call on? Call us for the number. It'll be on the website. On the website. Yeah. yeah. All right, it's for anybody who wants to speak to a lawyer between... 4 and 7 p.m. only on April the 12th to get some free legal advice. Is, is it mainly about taxes? What's, well, it think, just says what's going free on legal day? advice. It doesn't doesn't specify any particular type. Huh. It's just, uh, I guess, whatever you can think of. You know. I believe they do this every year. Yeah, uh, yeah they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they so do. Yeah. Customary thing. Okay, any announcements? No announcements, okay. Okay, we're scheduled for our next meeting, uh, March 26th, that's a week from today. And the right now hall. it's scheduled for the town hall. Of yep. course, if we complete the recommendations on the warrant this evening, mm -hmm. we, uh, we might not need to meet with the finance committee. Well, yeah, uh, we have to, yeah, we could change that on Thursday night if we have to. Yeah. Okay. Sure. With, with the. Uh, okay. So we're going to move over to the town hall and continue the meeting there with the finance committee. All right. All right. Okay. We're going to continue the um, the meeting with a uh, with the finance committee, and we're going to discuss a number of items on the uh, the budget, the warrant, and the school budgets. Okay, fiscal year 2019 budget. Tom, do you have any notes on that? Um, I do, but I would suggest moving to Conway Grammar School and Frontier Regional Budgets to uh, do that first. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tom. So, tonight we're presenting the FY19 school budget in the amount of $2,000,000 Three hundred eighty-two thousand eight hundred seventy-four thousand for the Conway Grammar School. Of this amount, we will be asking the town for a town appropriation of one million nine hundred eight thousand eight hundred sixteen dollars. This is an increase from last year's appropriation of sixty-four thousand one hundred sixteen dollars, or a three point four eight increase over last year. The additional funds of $474,398 are from school choice, federal grants, and tuition, special ed tuition revolving accounts, as well as early childhood tuition revolving. Please note that the FY19 budget, we, in this budget, we are not eligible for any Title I funds. Therefore, there are none budgeted this year. So we're asking the town uh, for an appropriation of one million nine hundred eight thousand eight hundred sixteen, and that's on page six of thirty of the Conway budget. Any of those? I don't think that's yeah, the, what we the most current one should say public hearing on it because that was <coughs> we were approved on Monday night. So and it's uh, page fifty. I'm is sorry, the, uh, Thursday night. Anyway. This, this is just the frontier. She thought we're doing the grammar school first. This is the grammar school, Conway Grammar School. So on page six, we're asking. We have grammar school. Yeah, it's coming. This is the grammar school. Got a front here in the packet room. You did get a Conway in the mail. Looks like it's going to be the If you look at page three of thirty. 
I think several of you saw this the other night when you were at the Conway Grammar School meeting. Page 330 shows the projected expenditures for FY19. And of the money that we're asking for, the appropriation plus the uh, Chapter 70 plus the funding that the funding that we get from other sources, 73% of our money goes to instruction. 6% goes to other student services, and that is transportation, medical services. 12% goes to administration, and that's both at the local level and at the superintendent's office level. And then the building and facilities takes 9% of our budget. The revenue we get, you can see below, 80% of the money that we receive comes from the town appropriation, and of that you do get Chapter 70 funds. School Choice pays 8% of our budget. Our special ed revolving account, the tuition students pay when they come to our school to our specialized uh, program called WINGS where students come and pay tuition, that pays for 10% of our budget. Uh, early childhood revolving is at 1% right now as it's developing and getting stronger and stronger. And then our SPED grant is 1%. Lynn, can we ask questions or should we oh, save sure. until the end? Yeah. I mean, so you mentioned wings is 10%. Um, but that, the, the budget includes wings, right? Mm -hmm. So is wings profitable? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're not supposed to actually make a profit, but it pays for itself, and yeah. then the funds also help pay for other special ed uh, items in the building. So for speech services, some OT services. Uh -huh, it great. does pay for itself and then some. Which, and you'll see But we don't lose money. anyway. It, it, no. Mm -hmm. And there's Conway residents in the program. And, and, and they don't pay. And they don't pay. And they so don't so pay. that's very, pro I mean, yeah. profitable is probably the wrong word. How many residents do we have in there? Three. Three. Okay. The, How many have uh, all together? Eight, eight, Ten, yeah. ten, but it would cost if we had to send those students out anywhere from ten to one hundred sixteen thousand dollars a year. So we're actually not only making money, but we're saving the money uh, by keeping students a in their own home district that need these services, and b we are able to get more special education services mm -hmm. from the program. Is that under instruction in your expenses? Like, where does that break out into? Um, it breaks out in different areas. Um, it comes in in different pockets, but then w when we, um, and you'll see as I, as I go a little bit further, you'll see how, uh, the money it goes in different areas. But uh, the money all comes into one pot, and then we <coughs> spend it. So we talked about the, um, we talked about the expenditures and then we talked about the revenue sources. So the four areas where we talked about the expenditures are instruction, other student services, administration, and buildings and facilities. So if you look under administration, it's 12% of the whole budget. When you break that 12% down, building-based leadership and clerical services is 49% of 12% of the budget. Uh, insurance, retirement buyback, other adjustments, 19% of the budget. District-wide information management and technology, those are the folks that keep our computers running, our network going, and uh, actually train the teachers in using um, computers and that kind of technology, that's 11%. The superintendent, the business, and the finance offices are 19%. And then the school committee and the legal services are 2%. And that's of the 12% of the pie that goes to administration. The largest percent of the pie, of course, is instruction. That's 73% of what we do. And you can see here, broken out, teachers take 59% of that, it's 59% of 73, which would be because that's, that's what we do as we teach. Medical and therapeutic <coughs> services, that's your OT, your PT, uh, that's um, occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech and language, that's 7%. 
Guidance and psychological psych, psychology services, 5%. Your instructional assistance, 20%. <coughs> Supplies, materials, hardware, and software at 6%. And then we have a curriculum, a special ed, and an early childhood director, and that's 3% of the budget. And as we go on further, you'll see that the instructional assistants that we have, uh, 10 of them are paid for by grants and other revenue sources. Are the SPED and the uh, EC and the uh, uh, curriculum directors all in-house, or are they yes. shared with the rest of the, oh, no. the district? With the four schools. Sure. With the four schools. So we, we don't have our own individual ones. No. no. So we, they, they just have a different allocation method because yeah. we, like myself and Dr. Carey, work for all five schools, mm -hmm. so we're split five ways. Right. These people only work at the elementary level, so their salaries are split four yeah. ways. Except for the SPED director, she is five. <laughs> so what, does, what does an occupational therapist do in Brown School? When students are coded or identified as students in need of services, special education services, they get an IEP. Depending on what they're diagnosed with, if a child has cerebral palsy, their movements aren't that, um, they're just not that uh, fluid. So sometimes they need help in handling a pencil and learning how to write, moving things, walking. Uh, navigating the younger children we have that might have some disabilities uh, will need some help navigating. Um, they, they have kind of methods where they climb through things or lift up just that core body strength. If you have autism or some other kind of congenital problem, a lot of times the, the core of your body is not that strong and you're not able to maneuver these things. It takes practice. So an occupational therapist either helps them to write with the small motor control or large motor control, walking fluidly, um, sitting up, doing all kinds of things like that. And then, of course, the, um, that's physical therapy and occupational therapy. And they, they work on different parts of the, the needs that the children have. And then the speech therapy, of course, is for students who don't speak smoothly uh, that need that help in enunciating. I mean, as a level one school, we have to provide those kind of services, right? That's, that's, that's oh, like yes. Level standard, right? Yeah. So, like it's, it's, it's a federal law. Mandate. All yeah. schools, not, not yeah. just being level one. No, it's a federal law. Uh, public school. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that well, Conway public. does it really, really, really well. Right. So. And the charter schools have to do it? I don't think they have the same uh, level of um, requirements as right. it, yeah, and they don't have, they don't take the same, um, we take every child regardless of where they are, uh, they, they can say we, we can't serve a child's needs and then they, they don't take them depending on how involved that their needs are. It's, they find a way not to follow the IEP. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So when we look at, um, on page five of 30, our buildings and facilities, we have a beautiful facility, our custodian, um, Bruce Jeanette, Bruce Jeanette does a marvelous job in, in following up on every single thing in that building. The building is in great condition, very well taken care of. So the piece of the pie that buildings get is 9%, not, not very big. But of that 9%, maintenance of buildings, grounds, and equipment is 22%. Heating and utilities is 39%. Networking and telecommunications, those are all the wiring and the telephone bills and all of that, that's 6%. And then our custodian services, the, uh, the uh, salaries for our custodians, that's 33%. And then when you look down to the other piece of the pie, other student services, uh, 6%, which is a very small piece of the pie, transportation services are 56% of that, uh, health services are 41, and then food services are three. And the health, which is different than the medical and therapeutic uh, services of OT, PT, and speech, this health would be the nurse, nursing supplies, and that kind of care. We have students that get a great deal of care over there. So if we're not, by not being a Title I school now, how much uh, more do we have to pay with the menace? I think about 
about twenty thousand. The, the grants have have been diminished uh, for you know quite a while, but because of the and if I have my uh, PowerPoint, I could show you. But because of the uh, the low number of uh, economically disadvantaged students, you're about thirty five percent. We just we just don't qualify. Yeah. And it's, it's due to the formula change. Yeah. The feds changed the formula yeah. on how to count yeah. free and oh. reduced, free and, and that's reduced. what really killed us. So if a couple so. of rich people move in Conway, we don't send the kids to Conway Grammar School, we all, we all have to pay up. So how many, how many students do we have this year? About 138. Since 138. Total, yeah. total or economically disadvantaged? Total. Yeah. It's 138. Yeah, it's, it's 138 today. It's 138 what, on October. What page is it? Uh, page 8 of 30. Okay. So that's, we freeze that on October 1st because that's what our, all our money is based on. And then if we look down the bottom, we can just figure yeah. that out so that we can carry through. So how many economically disadvantaged students do we have? That I don't know. I read somewhere um, last what, week, what is that 30 percent, right? Yeah, 35 percent. What's um, the definition of an economically disadvantaged child? Well, we, we did it on free and reduced lunch. The formula is different now, so they take that, but they also have a different way of going through um, household income. So they, they used to take, they, they used to look at everyone, and now what they're really looking at is just what we call a direct search. So if you're receiving government assistance, mm -hmm. if you're on unemployment, mm -hmm. you're a direct certification, you don't have to apply. If mm -hmm. you're a foster child, if you're a homeless child, you're a direct certification. Mm -hmm. And that's all they're counting. So they're not waiting for us to have the um, applications that go out to the families. Mm -hmm. They're just counting direct certs. Mm -hmm. And they leave the um, bag, basically the manually uh, um, families that manually apply. They leave oh, them out of the formula. So look at tax returns as you tell me honors method, in other words. You're not asking for tax returns or anything like that, right? No. Mm -hmm. Of the 138 students, how many were actually residents of the community? 99. About 100 bucks. 25 percent were not. How do you know? Of the 138? Huh? You oh, you mean school choice. Yeah. 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 34. Yeah. 34. 34. Yeah. 34. It's Most approximately of them are from, 25%. Most of from Greenfield and the money. 34. Right. School choice? 34 students, which is 25%, and it's an increase from last year of 8% when, uh, when we were only at 17 That's included in the 138? They're included in the 138. Yeah. So, Alan, what I thought you were going to ask about was a little bit different, but it's something that Patty talked about in the Frontier meeting, and it really feels we ought to talk about it when we're talking about Conway, which has to do with the zip code problem. And you, yeah, but you really don't want to talk about I, it. Well, no, no, but that's why I do want to talk about it. Because it's going to hurt Conway. So, so, con so right now, there are a lot of people, especially down in the Williamsburg end of town, mm -hmm. who have Williamsburg zip codes, and their houses are treated as if they're in Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. Not their houses. Not their houses. Their income. Their family income. income. Their income is filed yes. on a tax return. Williamsburg yes. is one of the wealthier towns in Western Mass. And, and so if, if this get, problem gets fixed, yes, they are go, they're then going to get lumped into Conway instead Williams of Williamsburg. Williams and is it state grants that are going to go down? Or, or well, you, your ability to pay is going to go up. Yeah. Because you're, you're, what you, they consider the aggregate model of the, um, yeah. the land value and the aggregate wealth of the community. So <clears throat> if they fix the zip code problem, Conway is going to probably get hurt because then your ability to pay is going to increase. Mm -hmm. Is Conway taxing their homes at this point, or are they paying? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 All homes are taxed. The state form, they, they have their own land. Yeah. But just, they're treated like homes in Conway. Yeah. Right. But, but for the for the for Desi, you know, they yeah. treat them like they're yeah. in the for me. Yeah. So real estate value, they're in Conway. Oh, yeah. Aggregate wealth model for family income, yeah. they're not in there. Right. Okay. That's true. So, so Patty, yeah, well, Robert, Hill, 138 South students are now too for Selvern. They're in the Selvern yeah. You have 138 students now. You're projecting 127. Mm -hmm. So we're going to lose 11 students. Well, we're not done collecting kindergarten right. students yet. Kindergarten is still is opening enrollment, and um, Principal Jordan has not made her recommendations for school choice for next year either. 
that will happen at the uh, April or May meeting. But but you're projecting a decrease. Right now, yes. Well, because we're getting 23 sixth graders are leaving, and we only have 10 kindergartners registered at this point. Okay. okay. And you want to up your instructional assistants by two? They were already. What do you mean they were already? So between the time last December when we were putting the budget together and now we have had two students come in that needed assistance. And so we had to hire the IEPs. We can't wait for the budget season. So you've already hired two, two more instructional assistants? Correct. Since the last time we did the budget, yes. Now, are they paid for at a I believe school right. choice? At a school choice. Mm -hmm. So we're getting two more people, but they're being paid for not in our budget, but money coming in. One is being paid from the special education grant, and one is being paid from the special education revolving grant. And we can talk about the money that those extra funds and where they come from. If you'd like to go to page, uh, I think it's 21. 21. Well, if you would go to page 27 of 30. Our school choice <coughs> money that comes in from the school choice students, 8%. Mm -hmm. That's, we, they bring in $180,981. Of that school choice money, which is 25% of our student body, mm -hmm. eight instructional assistance salaries are paid from that. Mm -hmm. And then early childhood revolving at $25,000. Mm -hmm. One instructional assistant. I don't know where we are. So, I'm, 27, 27. I'm on 27, but you're mixing up what we're going to expend versus what we'll bring in in the book. Okay, it was just explaining. Yeah. That. So if you go to page 28 of 30, yeah. that that is what we're looking at school choice. That's the revenue, and then how we're going to what we're going to spend it on. So we always tried to spend a year in arrears because if we ever wanted to withdraw from the school choice program, we would have a year to make up that income. But we're not doing that anymore because the towns have asked us to, and this has happened in all four communities, they have asked us to keep our regular budgets down so school choice has picked up more people. So right now, we're projected this year to, to bring in 161,393. But we started with a negative 58,446, and we're going to spend 153,419. So we're going to start 19 minus 50,472. Mm -hmm. The projected revenue right now for 19 is 213,625. So we would have 163,153 to expend, but we're going to expend 180,981. That's the number Dr. Carey was referring to on page 27. That is what we're going to expend. And if you look down below, it's all under instructional aids. All right, so we're actually doing better because we have less of a deficit this year mm -hmm. than we did last year. Mm -hmm. But if you if you if you look at um, if you look at if you want to look at all our instructional aids, you would look on uh, page. And this is why I like these pages, because it, it, it shows you everything in a nutshell. Um, on page 21, there's a function code called All Non-Clerical Professional Instructional Assistance 2330. So out of the budget that the town's going to appropriate, we'll, we'll expend 68259 from school choice 180 from SPED revolving, 81297 and the SPED grant will give us one at 22270 So in totality, we will spend $352,807 on instructional assistance. But only 68259 is coming out of our budget? Out of the town Everything else is being paid for by other programs? Correct. Okay. Can I just ask an aside question? I don't mean to, but you got to refresh nine Wayne's kids. Is that what I heard? What, what's the what's the? We have eleven. Eleven Wayne's. Three are Conways. 
What are the other towns that, that use the WINGS program? Our sister schools and in, in the union. Okay. So There's one from Belcher Town, and then some of our surrounding areas. There's uh, Belcher Town. I think like we get some kids from like Turner's Falls or Gilmont View. They'll come come down. Pioneer kids will come down. Mohawk. Mohawk. So, would, so would you say was Wings started here really to meet the needs of the the four towns primarily? Is that the yes. history? Yes. I, I believe if, if, if my I wasn't here, but the, this program started in Greenfield, and when Marty Barrett left Greenfield and came here, she brought the program with her, um, and it's and it was supposed to be like a standalone program inside Conway, mm -hmm. um, but then the regs didn't allow that to happen. So at, at first, if a Conway kid was in there, we were taking money out of the general appropriation and putting it in the revolving fund. And, you're not allowed to do that. So we had we had a lot of a, a lot of regulation stuff that we had to clean up. But it was basically because we were seeing more and more behavior starting to accelerate, um, and that's what the Wings program basically deals with: our children with behavioral issues. But these other towns do not have Wings, so they're if they are hurting financially because they're sending the kids here instead of having a wings program. They're, they're, they're saving money because if they went to a private 766 school like Dr. Harry was saying, that could run anywhere from 15,000 up to 116 grand a year. So we're uh, we're not allowed to make a profit. So we, we charge our tuition based on what we know we were going to expend divided by how many kids, and that's how we charge tuition. So they're actually saving money by using our program. You know what that number comes to? Are we around, uh, I want to say it's 27 or 38. It depends if you need an IA or you don't need an IA. Mm -hmm. And if you need OT or speed. So it, it depends. So we have a rubric that we use. Mm -hmm. That the, the the base teachers in there, the psychologist in there, costs if they're going to need OTPT speech. So it's it's a rubric that we use that gives us the cost, and then they also um, they have to pay for their own transportation. Now if the, now if we had a school choice child in Conway that ended up in the Wings program, we would bill back school choice, the, the tuition and the transportation. So we would get the five thousand plus the rubric sped costs of that child. I, I'm sorry, maybe I shouldn't be saving this to the very end, I don't know, but so our, the, the, the number that was published uh, in the paper not too long ago for Western Mass rural kids, and this would include wings, I assume, but it's, it's what, 18,000, is, is this? I, 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 I would have to see what that article is because Desi has now started, they published two numbers. And one is, well, regular regular education kids and then sped education kids so they do it two ways so that you can see what we're paying per student I for see. a regular ed student right. and what we're paying per child per pupil for a sped student i mean the point of the article was to show that the rural towns are paying a couple of thousand more on average than the non-rural towns in i guess in massachusetts with the exception of uh, maybe the boston you know metro area mm -hmm. um so uh, I, I, so my, well, the reason I ask this is, so how? I mean, do you have, do you have a handle? Of, are you able to get a cost per student for the wings program? Yes, I, I just didn't bring that with me, but we have a director that uh, Tracy, what's her last name? Tracy Prezenko and our SPED director Karen um, Ferrandino. They they're the ones. Tracy does a site visit, assesses the child, comes back. Her and Karen speak. We come up with the model, and and again. I, I just want to make sure that the other towns are taking advantage of us. No, 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 no. 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 Okay. Well, if we have three students that we don't pay for. It, and we're breaking even. We're doing well at that point. So if you look at, if you look at, if we go back to um, uh, twenty, age twenty nine of thirty, we're gonna end, we're gonna, I, I call this about break even. We're gonna end the next year at fifteen thousand three eighty eight. We're gonna end this year with about ninety seven thousand eight oh eight. But again, that's a low estimate on the revenue side for nineteen. Because I don't, I know who's leaving the program because they're in sixth grade, 
And of course, we're out that we're going to get referrals. We always do. So, but from a conservative revenue, I'm only counting the kids I know that are remaining. Mm -hmm. So really, so to adjust for the for the uh, for the lower projected enrollment, you've adjusted where. So and if you if you look at the second line, if you look at the second else. line and start with the projected FY18 budget. Last year I came to you and I said, with the children we have right now in our wings program, we'll bring in $137,500 in tuition. Look at the actual. We're bringing in $266,374. Wow. Okay, but now I've got sixth graders leaving again. Mm -hmm. So I'm say, so telling you, so. I'm only gonna budget for I who see. I know is in the program, okay. but we're at, we've got vacancies and they will fill up fast. Mm -hmm. Seems like it's an important program, actually. So it seems it for, for a lot of reasons. Okay. So do you have a limit on the number of yeah. wins that students you take? 12 is the top. 12 is the top. 12 is the top. There so, are teacher-student ratios that are um, I'm give, grade. mandated. They're great. They're sort of gradeless. Oh, well, okay. They call them SPs. So and I'm sorry, but I don't understand. I don't know what SPs are stated for. They range. So they 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 they're they're one to six. Usually the smaller ones we try if we can to keep them in their own classroom and service them there with push-in help. Mm -hmm. They're integrated throughout the day in different activities. Uh -huh. They take art and, you know, they eat lunch with their typical peers. Yeah. They do music and art to eat with typical peers. And uh, sometimes, though, when it comes to the academics, they just need to have a more individualized uh, program for their academics. Doctor, you do want to continue with uh... um, I was just going to point out to you on page 27, you can see the different uh, revenue sources. The point I was trying to make was that out of the uh, IAs that we do have in our building, we have right now 15 instructional assistants. Ten of them are being paid from grants. So the school <coughs> choice brings in $180,981. And that pays for eight instructional assistants, as you saw when Patty showed you. The early childhood revolving pays $25,000, and that is the uh, that is an instructional assistant. The SPED revolving, that is our WINGS program, brings in $246,000. 128. This is actually what we're what we're planning on spending, 246,128, and that pays for teacher salaries, instructional assistant salaries, the services that the students get, um, the OT, PT, speech, those things that we had discussed earlier, and um, some instructional materials. And then the SPED grant brings in 22,270, and that again is an instructional assistant. So there looks like there's 10, maybe 11, or 10, 15, total. 15 total, but at least 10, maybe 11 from what I'm reading. 11 um, of those instructional assistants are actually supported by these uh, other grants and other revenue sources. So the, uh, the drivers of the budget, I can let Patty talk about those um, if you want to go back up front. My, my goal was to explain the budget, break it down in the, in the, the expenditures that we do, and then the um, revenues, and how we're supporting our IA. <coughs> So if you look at page 9 of 30, mm -hmm. this is strictly going from the town appropriation of our FY18 town appropriation of 1,844,700 mm -hmm. and why we're now asking in 19 for 1,908,860. Mm -hmm. So we had a 2.5% uh, increase in the negotiated collective bargaining agreement that cost 27446 
Uh, the negotiated steps, 10,259. Degree changes, 2,978. We have an allowance here for non-union salary increases of 5,668. We had, uh, we were able to save some money in our hiring um, by 7,165. And uh, we do have an increase in our retirement buyback for of 16,195. We had a teacher that retired last year and didn't notify us in time, so she doesn't get her money till this year. Mm -hmm. um, you have an increase in central office expense of 7,508. Uh, increase in transportation, 2007. This is based on a uh, consumer price index that's written into the contract, and this year's was 1.83%. This is our fifth and final year with our GRIPCO. Um, I've been attending the Franklin County um, business managers meetings, and they think that they are going to go for a grant to do transportation for the entire Franklin County. Um, I have told uh, Dr. Carey and our school committees, I don't think it would be advantageous for us to participate in that bid because we have a local vendor who the last time we bid, the next closest bidder to that person, to Gripco, was over $100,000. So we would be putting our own bid out um, instead of joining Franklin County. We've been with Franklin County the last two bids, but there was always an opt-out option so that we bid the, all the contractors bid it as Franklin County and then individual schools, and we always made out better with individual schools. Judge, where are you going to bid it again? I'm not, I, I, my recommendation to the school committee will be that we put our own bid document together and we bid it ourselves. How are you going to be able to judge the cost compared to what you bid it and what, what the county's doing? Well, um, How are you going to judge that if you don't know that figure? How are you going to judge your cost savings? I, I, I understand one? the question, I, and I'm thinking through the answer. Because historically it has shown that we, it is not to our advantage by hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. to go with Franklin County. I'm not saying that, that it's not the, it's, it's the good way to go, I'm saying. But you really should have that other figure available this year. But they're not allowing an opt out. So they're not allowing, they're not allowing an opt out okay. this year because no one will come to the. They they want the big bidders yeah. to come to the table. They want the national firms to come yeah. to the table. And there's no opt out, so we'll be stuck. And I think that having a local vendor, we don't want to be stuck going with Five Star, who's being very aggressive throughout the whole Northeast region. Um, and, and, and no opt-out provision. <coughs> mm -hmm. I think it's too much to risk. If, if I can recall from five years ago when we were talking about the Gribco, mm -hmm. kind of, and I, I, I can recall, maybe I don't think we had the perfect knowledge then of what the other ones were going to come in at, but we had a sense um, that from who was bidding and what just what they cost, just what they cost when you call up to, to charter a bus for a field trip. Uh, that they were going to be far more expensive than Gripco, and that's how it. And, and almost, or, or a lot of the financial trouble that you read about every day of Mohawk and of Pioneer is because of this albatross of a bus contract they have with Cosmecus, uh, and they're getting they they're really getting hurt more than we are. So do we have the same bus drivers for grammar school and high school? Yes, we have, so, two, we have so, a two-tiered so, system. So Conway, as a grammar school, would also somehow um, use use our own bus service separate from the whole Frontier Re Re Regional School. Uh, no, so it's, it's so not no. Conway buses leave Frontier. Go up to Conway, drop the kids off, come back to the elementary school, pick up those kids, go up, drop them off, come back. And then come back. But, but so, so as part of the region, anyway, so I'm wondering how we would opt out at the regional school level if the regional school wanted to go with... We're not saying the, uh, the region. The, I'm not saying regional, Mr. Armstrong. I'm saying Franklin County. Every school in Franklin County would have the same bus driver. Right, right. But she, he's saying if Franklin, if, if, if Frontier Regional went and Union 38 stayed. Mm. Right, right. That's, that's what I'm wondering about. You have a kid. Uh, it, it wouldn't uh, save the money, yeah. It's a good question, but it it wouldn't make sense because we're there's an hour difference. So 
high school early. Yeah, and it wouldn't be feasible for a grip to build without building that. Right, right, right. 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 His, his, his prices would skyrocket if he only got one yeah. right. and not the other. So, so grip co is better for us because he's local for us, basically. Correct. But it, I mean, it, well, and it, but it doesn't mean that he's going to get the bid. We still the, yeah. the, the law mandates that we put it out, and I'm sure Kismeskis right. will bid. And um, there's another smaller vendor up, uh, <coughs> that did deals with Mahar that might bid, and we would have Mr. Gribko that might bid. And Five Star, like I said, has been very aggressive, and they might bid too. So but they'll bid they'll for still, all of Franklin County. They yeah. will, but they might still bid on our own. Oh, okay. For, they bid for, they for, might for come Conway to the table also. for us. Because they're trying to get their feet in here. Yeah. How many years have we had for Gribko? Um, I, I don't. A very long time. A long time. Yes. Well, he certainly knows what his costs are if he's been yeah. running this for. Ben, actually, been a very excellent budget. Yeah. 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 And I have to tell you, when um, I, when I first came here, um, everyone was like. Wait till you meet Lenny Gribko. Well, and I have to tell you, it's no, it, it couldn't have been further from the truth from what I expected and what I know because that man has a heart bigger than his hands and he's got the biggest hands I've ever seen on a human yeah. being. And he loves our children and he does everything he can yeah. every day to get them back and forth to school safely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's got a heart of gold and and he's a sweetheart and I love and he working got that with from him. His dad. <laughs> and I met his I I, I met his dad. I, right. I, 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 I did get to meet his dad, dad. And, yeah. it, 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 and it is. Uh, it's, a, it's a great contract and I enjoy working with Rico yeah. very well. They, they don't ever just point he never says no yeah okay so moving on we're we have an increase in sped transportation of thirty six hundred dollars and that's just more children who are getting i um, transportation in their iep services and um, small decrease in our technology costs of four thousand three hundred and eighty we're not using less technology we're really pinning down allocation methods based on the softwares that we're using so conway was able to save some money because they have less students so the uh, the student-based uh, cost of the technology went down mm -hmm. so um, and that brings us to the, the net increase of sixty four thousand one hundred and sixteen dollars right so your, your salary related costs the first three are our collective bargaining agreements that, that you have no control over correct that's correct all right, so that amounts to uh, a little over forty thousand dollars, maybe forty-one thousand dollars out of the sixty-four thousand. Mm -hmm. So what you've been able to do is basically say what you have control over is only a twenty-three thousand dollar increase. Okay, that's pretty good. Out of a two million dollar budget. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Arguably, yeah. more than sixty percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if the state solves the zip code problem, uh, uh, this, may, <laughs> this may go up. So that's why I wanted to this bring it up. This isn't going to go up. Your ability to pay is going to go up. Your minimum contribution will go up, which is more than likely going to affect your frontier assessment. More than it's going to affect this More than Conway? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Will we get a vote on this? Okay. Mm -hmm. Great people to the numbers. Should we go to Frontier? Yeah. Well, we have one, one question actually on the Conway Grammar School. It's approximately two hundred forty-two thousand two hundred dollars. So our question is, I guess it's more, more view principle board. What's the goal? What, what is there a target amount to uh, build? I didn't hear the first part of the question. Two hundred forty-two thousand one hundred something dollar okay. Conway Grammar School stabilization fund. Okay. What's the goal? What do they want to build it up to? Oh, know? oh! So every year the school committee asks uh, to put fifty thousand dollars in the stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. And um, last year we withdrew some money on a war and article to make some uh, repairs and improvements mm -hmm. in the school. Mm -hmm. So by building the stabilization fund. What we're looking to do is just have money put away for, like, you know, our building's 20 years old. We might need a new heating system uh, sooner than later. Um, we've been having issues with our septic. Uh, so uh, there's money there already put away rather than having big costs be front upon us and not have anything. So is, there, is there a goal? Or is yeah. there have a goal to work We had talked about 300 or 350, um, but we're... We're getting in that neighborhood, yeah. um, and uh, uh, the, there's 
Yeah, and, and we're really lucky right now as a town and as a school to have that already. I think we're yeah. we're ahead of we're ahead of every other we're ahead of our neighboring schools. Um, and when we when, and when Mr. Cantor saying we have like 350, what what we really want to have is like we did in Deerfield. We want to have enough there so if we go for an MSBA project for whatever project we're doing, if we can apply to the Mass School Building Authority, we want to have the startup costs of paying the architect and the designer already there that could be easily appropriated by the uh, select board already there so that we can move faster through the project if we can get an accelerator repair project. So it like a 20 split, we pay 20%? No, it would probably be a little higher. So it, 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 that is based on points and that's based on free and reduced. So we would probably be, I would think Conway might be in the 35% range that they would pay 35% of eligible costs of the project. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. And, and we know that next year we're going to be coming for Frontier needs to start a capital a capital yeah. stabilization fund, mm -hmm. and we need to fix uh, like ordinary maintenance stuff out of that and think yeah. you know what. Uh, so next year I believe we're going to be coming before you to try to start one for Frontier. Mm -hmm. So that's a good time to sort of end the request temp temporarily for Conway uh, and begin for, for the grammar school and begin the request for Frontier to build that up next year. So. This year Conway Grammar School <clears throat> was able to get a new intercom system. And security yeah. security yeah. cameras and an intercom system um, for safety, you know, really safety issues. They weren't, they weren't able to contact the individual classroom, so that was a very big deal. And of course, Tom has taken, uh, taken the warrant or the article for the, uh, the septic uh, liner, the pump liner, and the, the septic pump and the septic liner, right? It's the water, water tank. tank. Water, water tank. tank. Water tank. Water tank. tank. 32,000 at the septic. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's all right. The yeah. well pump. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. So the pump. pump. Yeah. So yeah. the pumping in, so not the going out. Right. Yeah. You know, when you flush, but as opposed to flush. <laughs> all right. Any other questions on the uh, Conway Grammar School budget? Okay. Let's move on to Frontier. Thank you. <laughs> so if you go to um, the Frontier budget, if everyone can turn to page 8 of 54, the first paragraph, we're talking about the FY19 budget for Frontier Regional School District has increased by 3.09% or $331,509. The operating budget has increased by $326,395. The regional transportation has increased by $5,114. In addition, Frontier Regional will use, as we spoke earlier with the, uh, the grammar school, Frontier Regional gets $705,950 in other funding sources that will bring the total FY19 budget to $11,754,404. We're asking the towns, the four towns, based on their appropriation numbers, for $331,509 increase. So if you want to look at the, if you want to go back and look at the, uh, the pie charts based on the budget from Frontier, on page 4 of 54, again, you see there's a little, there's a few more areas that Frontier Regional uses for their proposed budget when we break down their budget. 49% of the frontier budget is used for instruction. 8% is for other student services, and that includes, of course, transportation, food services, and medical, and um, also um, activities, student activities and sports. That's 8%. The administration is 7%. Tuitions to other districts, Unlike the Union 38 schools, the regional pays for it 
because we're a regional district, that's seven percent. Employee benefits, that's twenty percent of the uh, entire the proposed budget. And buildings and facilities get nine percent. Mm -hmm. When we look at the revenue sources, the town assessments from the four towns is seventy percent of the money that we, we get. We we're asking for. Our Chapter 70 state aid gives us 24% of our budget. Our SPED grant is a 0.9, our Title I is a 0.4, Circuit Breaker 1.8, SPED Revolving 1%, and School Choice 2%. So those are smaller pieces. I'm sorry. So where's Chapter 70? as it relates to the grammar school? The, the town okay. receives that directly. The town, okay. It, it's, okay, so you don't show yeah, The money yeah. we're asking the town for the town appropriation, the chapter 70 you receive. Okay. Um, for our budget, for, for Conway Grammar School, chapter 70 is about 20%, but the regional is 24 and Why is it because we're regional, we're regionalized, we get more? You, you, your, your chapter 70 money gets split three ways, I believe, because you're a member of Frontier Regional, Franklin County Tech, Tech and the Cowie Grammar. So uh -huh. your chapter 70 goes in three different directions. Okay. So a piece comes to the town, a piece right. goes to Franklin County Tech, and a piece goes to Frontier Regional. Right. We what get percentage that? of Franklin Tech and goes chapter 70? I, I don't. I, 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 I can get that number for you, Mr. Singer, but I don't have my computer with me tonight. We get that on our cherry sheets. We, yes. we have that we have that number. They break okay. it out. Thanks. They break it out. Thank you. And twenty four percent is pretty good. You get the overall allocation twenty percent. Mm -hmm. They if we I, well I look at it this way. This twenty four percent they gave us twenty twenty dollars per student yeah. this year. Right. And that's that's not much. <laughs> not yeah. enough. Not much. So when you when we break it down on page five of fifty four. The administration is only, remember, 7% of the budget. 42% of that 7% is building-based leadership and clerical services. That's the front office folks, the assistant principal, the principal. 3% uh, is school committee and legal services. The superintendent business and finance offices is 42%. That's a big number. Um, all of their, all of their professional. I'm, I'm, I'm teasing yeah. you. Yeah, all of their, uh, the payroll is generated there, whereas we generate the payroll and then bring it to the towns and they make the checks. We do it all, right. all the POs and um, all of that. And then your district-wide information uh, management and technology is 13 percent. That's the uh, Frontier Regional share of that. When we look at our buildings and facilities, that's 9%, which again, administration is 7%, and this is a very small 9%. Maintenance of building and grounds and equipment is 22% of 9%. Heating and utilities is 36% of 9%. Uh, networking and telecommunications is 5% of 9%, and then our custodian services is 37% of that small piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. And then when you turn the page, you'll see the instruction, and of course this is what we're in the business of. So, half of the budget, 49% of the budget is given away, given for instruction. Teachers and department heads, that's 70% of half of the budget. And then you'll see on the other side our medical and therapeutic services, that's OTPT. There's also three programs at the high school. Uh, guidance and psychology services are 8% of that 49%. Instructional assistance are 10%. Supplies, material, and technology, uh, that's hardware and software, 5%. And then they have a curriculum director and a SPED director, and that's 3% of that instructional piece of the budget. So so in at Frontier there's there's less of a demand for instructional assistance. Definitely. As the children get older, their needs they uh, what we call they fade. 
the, you know, we fade that kind of a service when they're young and little. It's like having a puppy. You just have to be on them all the time. And these children are so young that they are frontal lobe. They, they really need to have someone with them all the time where they'll hurt themselves or others. As they get older, they really start to become more independent. So they grow out of some of their... Yes. Some of them do, although we have an ABA program, which is Applied Behavior Analysis Program, but it's an ABA program. Those folks need to have someone with them all the time because they're not cognitively, uh, they're not cognitively able to uh, determine the autism and uh, different kinds of cognitive birth defects. And then we have another uh, program. I think it's life skills, and those students, uh, they are also, but not, the needs aren't as great. They're, they're able to reason, but they still need a lot of support to navigate the high school. Then we have students in wheelchairs with serious medical conditions that, that they'll never be out of the wheelchairs, very profound disabilities. And then we have a behavioral program for the middle school students as they adjust. But you, overall, the, the kinds of care that they need from instructional assistance, it begins to fade as they get older. They, mm -hmm. they just don't need as much support. Okay. Um, so when we look at other student services, that's 8% of the budget. So athlete, athletics and student activities, this is something we don't actually pay for in the elementary, but in the high school it's 33% of their, uh, that 8% of the budget, and that's all the clubs and drama and all of the things, the, the music and all that stuff. All the teams. Music uh, too. I'm sorry? The music too. Oh yes, yeah. band and, and all of those things. Food services is 2% of that budget. And transportation is 51% of 8%. And then health services, and that's our nursing, uh, and we have uh, nursing uh, assistance too for the students that are uh, medically fragile. And then if you turn to page seven of 54, these are additional costs, and these are line items 5,100, 5,200, and 9,000. And uh, 5,100 and 5,200, uh, this is 27% of the budget. And that would be, uh, again, employee retirement and insurance benefits at 74 percent of 27 percent of the budget and then tuition to other districts currently we have i believe we have 160 students choicing in which is tremendous um, it just goes to show you the reputation of frontier students are coming in from all over we have 42 students choicing out uh, and then we have charter school students 52 so uh, th those costs are high for the charter school students. And um, as uh, Pr Principal Modesto said, we need to take in four school choice students to pay for one charter school out. So the tuition to other districts, does that include, is that charter or is that other Yeah, that's what's really getting us. <laughs> No, that's what's getting us, is the, the charter. But it's also SPED, so it's our, it, yeah. you included yeah. SPED, yeah. choice, well, and charter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most well, When I look back at 5,100 and 5,200, they don't make sense, but 9,000, I, I don't see charter there, that's what I was wondering. For, it's to other Massachusetts schools. So when is this tuition to non-public schools? That, that, that would that, be our that, SPED That's kids. the charter, or that's SPED? Yeah. Well, charter schools, too. I don't think I've put it on in the uh, I think somewhere else, yeah. So what's our, what's our net on, on that whole operation of kids coming in, kids going out? I can't give a plus seven. Uh, Dollar-wise or uh, student-wise? Yeah, do Dollar-wise. Uh, dollar we're plus 70 students, according to it. This is the first year that we're underwater, I believe. It's our second year projected. It's page yeah. 37 to 54. So in 2017, they projected for the first time that we would owe more money to Choice and Charter than we were bringing in, in the amount of about $70,000. What happened was we got revenue of $466,843, which we didn't think we were getting, so we didn't spend it, so we have it sitting there to be used this year. So we had more school kids choicing in yes. than expected. Um, so, if you look at the projected um, 
18. We were going to have total revenue of 1,198,934. As of December, they're now saying it's 1,303,669. Expenses going out in last June, they were telling us it would have been 999,783. That it has increased to 1,286,489. So we thought we would have a net revenue of 199,151. We're actually going to only have $17,180 for 18. Um, the governor's budget is projecting our total revenue to come in at 127732 and our charter school choice and tuition going out to be 1,312,994 or a net law, uh, outflow of 35,672. So if you look down below, uh, the beginning balance in our school choice fund was 466843. We're using $142,133 this year. That'll leave us with 324,710. Mm -hmm. We take the 17,180 and add it, and we'll have available 341,890 for the 19 budget. And we're going to expend 264,897, and that covers this 35,672 shortfall. So we're projecting that we'll end the year with $59,813 in that fund. And that is a safety cushion for someone that could move into the district and be an out-of-district placement, someone that we couldn't take care of in-house. In, 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 in okay. So we had a very good year this year. 17, we did. And next year, we're projected to have an average year or whatever. Well, you can hope you'll get more choice kids in again. I'm hoping we're going to get more state charter aid. Look, that's the difference. If you look this year, um, in, in the House budget, uh, they projected 38,394. After they had the joint committee, we had 88,585. So they increased that. Um, if you look, if you want more detail um, as far as the school choice and charter, you can look on page. Um, I have a nice little chart all broken out on page 45 of 54. So it breaks it out by town. And on the left is the number of students, and on the right is the costs. What, what page is this on? 45 okay. of 54. So right now, Conway has choice students at the high school level. They have seven students. At the charter schools, they have 14. So you, right now, you have 21 students going out of district. And if you look on the right, the cost of that is 261, six, oh, I'm sorry, 301,850. Mm -hmm. But because there, it, this is silent, this did not exist when the original agreement um, was, was developed. You're only paying $204,013, so other towns are sharing in your costs by $97,837. So, so just we're getting a benefit of a, almost $100,000, basically, because of right. the agreement. Okay. Sunderland and Deerfield are not too So this was very contentious at the hearing mm -hmm. that you held. And, and I think it's really unfortunate. And... Um, Maybe, you know, I, I think at some point it would be great to have a real discussion about this because I don't, I, I don't think it's fair for people to think that Conway is getting this big benefit. Well, you're not the only one. I mean, uh, Whiteley looks like they're getting a big benefit too. So it's two and two. Every time, it's like. I mean, I mean, we don't look at the cost of the sports program and calculate how many Conway kids participate in sports and how many Deerfield kids participate in sports, and we all contribute to it and try to apportion it by town. Yeah, you know, we, there are other programs in the school that we don't apportion by town and then say, oh, well, Deerfield, you know, they're... Well, everything is apportioned by town. Yeah. It's by, all, but by, we, by all pay our, we all pay our percent. Correct, right? and, and we, here you're not. Because it, tr truly, the cost of Conway kids going out is 300 and 1,850, but you're only paying 200. We don't count which towns have a higher percent of sped kids going out that cost the town money and say, well, oh, well, they're, a, they're sped kids there's are. There's another argument. People so, have so, talked about wanting to do so, that. So, <laughs> you know, I think before Conway gets looked at askance as, you know, 
making out like a bandit here. There are many programs that that we we, we could look at this same issue. Correct. It's and just that this issue did not exist at the time of the regional agreement. None, none and some, of these people, did. some people feel this is one issue that need, this should be addressed. This is a very easy issue to look at that way, but I think there's many of them, and I think it's, right. you know. And everyone that we look at, two towns make out, and two uh -huh. towns don't. So how do you think the vote's going to go? <laughs> it's not going to change. <laughs> right. <laughs> so when you look at that last... Um, Pie chart school choice tuition is, is included in it. Um, when I look closely, page 754. Page 754. Yeah, well, um, this is where the district is 26. I, I, I had a question on 754 on that page. Are we back there? Sure. The, mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on 7 of 54. Mm -hmm. So the 74 percent employee retirement insurance benefits is that insurance benefit to the retired, or is that insurance benefits for it's, the district? It's both. It's the it's it, when we say it's employee retirement, it's our assessment from Franklin County Retirement. Right. It's our insurances for both our active and retired insurance. Okay. So it's a, it's a little bit of both. Okay. Patty may want to um, just briefly go over the driver's review on page, page 12. 12 or 54. So again, the first thing we're going to look at is the collective bargaining issues. So the steps were 56,956. The 2.5% 2 increase is 106,650. Uh, we have new longevity payments of 10,500. We have an allowance for non-union salary increases of 16135 We had to ch change school choice funding, bringing 65622 back onto the this budget because of the, project, the projected loss in the, um, in the net charter choice story. Um, coaching stipends increased 3156 That's also contractual. Uh, mentor stipends, 3550 This isn't an item, a new item, but it's one that we never budget for. So now we're going to put it in the budget, so when we have to pay it. So anyone that's new to the district is required to have a mentor for two years, and we just never budget for it. And then Darius calls me and says, where, where do I put the mentors? And I said, we're going to get them aligned. Um, we have a decrease this year in retirement buybacks of 37978 and through some great hiring, Darius was able to save us this year $56,536 in new hire savings. Um, our gas expense, we're just adjusting it $400. Uh, unemployment tax, we're adjusting it based um, on the wages and the rate of 806 Health insurance waivers, our contract for our teachers provides that if you do not take our insurance, we give you $1,000 and we have one new person that took that benefit. Um, custodial supplies, we're, in, we're increasing $2,000. The regional transportation, 5114 same as we talked about at the elementary level. The Medicare tax goes up 11000 based on our projected salaries. The central office expense goes up 15391 Sewer charges, $18,850. Deerfield only used to charge us like a base rate, and now they're charging us the full rate. So we had to increase um, our, our sewer charges. Can we go back to the central offices a second? Sure. You made the move to go to the frontier to save money, correct? Why are you just going up so high? Basically because of our health insurance. Um, I, I think I wrote that up. Let me see. I thought I wrote that up. Mm -hmm. I think we in the All right, Dave, let's go with the other health insurance. That was for the teachers, was for administration. Yeah. Employee benefits, health insurance. I didn't write that up. Okay. 
Uh, so, well, first, there is a, an increase of um, not much. They're going to go from, there is the, the percentage increase of 33.36. They're going up to 33.45. Um, we added the food service director. Uh, and then we also, but we did eliminate some costs we, because we, jo uh, we jointly did a printing contract with the high school, which saved us some money. And I don't know uh, why I'm blanking on what those other drivers were. I'll, I'll get that answer to Tom for you, Mr. Baker. Yeah. Technology. I think our dear brother going to get the money back in the sewer cost. <laughs> yeah, right. That's <laughs> why the pipes in the sewer and the well and all that. <laughs> They're going to come in the back door and get some. So we're requesting $25,000, and that's just to keep our, we are uh, fully one-to-one um, -one devices at, at the uh, 7th through the 12th grades, and this is just to do replacement because the Chromebooks age out very quickly. Yep. Um, Franklin County Retirement Assessment, we got a hit by $45,128, um, and Mr. Kowacki just says that it's because people are living longer. Um, our health insurance increase 109364 and that doesn't that does include the piece that we had to that we will have to negotiate with our union so they allowed us to make changes to the plan so we get the cost of the insurance with the, with the plan changes and then what the cost of the insurance would have been if we hadn't made these plan changes and the, the union gets 25% of those savings. Mm -hmm. So we, we, that we were able to calculate that amount, and that's in there. That also affects central office as well, because mm -hmm. even though it is union-driven, anyone who participates <coughs> gets the part of that 25% benefit. So that drove the cost of some of the cost of the central office as well. Is there, for health insurance, do you guys do any kind of like wellness program or something? We do. The Hampshire Group Insurance Trust has a wellness program, so we have both boards up in every school. Um, we have, um, I believe, Conley Grammar School and Frontier get wellness grants through that through them. Um, they're, they have a website, Blue Cross Blue Shield, a healthy me .com. Um, You go in and you put in your goals for fitness and things like that. They give you a $50 uh, gift card for doing preventative things such as colonoscopies, uh, mammograms, so they reward you for doing things proactively. The insurance program. Though. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's, is it reducing our rates at all? We're, ho we're, we're hoping that, we're hoping <laughs> that, that, that it Do will. we have to have like a certain participation level? Like how does that, how would it affect our rates? When you say you're hoping, what does that mean? Yeah. They've never given us those statistics, like, you know, but the healthier we are and the more we're taking care of ourselves by doing preventative medicine, by setting health goals for ourselves, you would hope that that would make a healthier community and less up. utilization of the plan. And then that will affect you. Right. right. Utiliz you, utilization and enrollment is what drives the cost. Right. But it should keep the increases lower if they yeah. can affect the change in the population. We're still way hard to get killed out here. And, and you have to remember that um, one thing at Frontier, we're still at 80-20. Oh. What's the elementary school? I think 10? you guys are uh, 45, aren't you, Tom? 70-30. You're 70-30? Okay. Uh, every one of the towns is different, so I always... Uh, so elementary 70-30 and the high school is between 80-20. So the staff is paying 20%. Mm -hmm. So that drives, that's driving the cost as well. well. Fatty, I'm looking at these drivers and I'm figuring that the, the ones you don't have control over amount to about just under $350,000. Mm -hmm. And to consider you're only changing 131 because of the decreases. Nice nice job, Darius. And Fatty. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this looks good. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Well, you know, I'm looking at everything that, that you have on your list here that I know you don't have control over. And, um, you know, considering that you're below that number, 
in your total your net increase. I, that, I think that's, that yeah. is, is a very good job on, on the budget. Uh, Patty, I had a question for you. Last uh, Monday, last week, uh, State Senator Hines had, a, had somebody from uh, DC present, uh, Bob O'Donnell from the business office. Rob, yep. And uh, versus the uh, state average Western Mass rural districts, our health insurance costs for teachers are a lot higher. Mm -hmm. Are the uh, business managers, what, what can we do about it? <laughs> well, my. It's 50% higher than state average. Uh, uh, really? Yes. Yeah. I, I schools to we we since I've been here we belong to the Hampshire Group Insurance Trust. Prior, prior to that, I believe there was a Franklin County Insurance Trust, mm -hmm. and and Frontier belonged to that. I think that we get um, that the Hampshire Group Insurance Trust has done a great job. We went five years with zero percent increase because their reserves were so high. So that right there to me is impressive. So now they're trying to, they're at, the, they reached the point where the reserves had to be, couldn't go down any lower, mm -hmm. and we started to come up a little bit. Mm -hmm. When we look at what we, what we are paying, we're paying fifteen dollars for a copay. Anybody else in this room paying fifteen dollars for a copay when you walk into your primary care? Mm -hmm. Anybody in this room paying twenty dollars for a specialist? So More. these things were low. The other, the thing that bothers me about the Hampshire Group Insurance Trust, um, and I get killed for saying this, but they have three layers. They have single, they have plus one, and they have family. So we can't control the utilization. So what? the only thing I can control is the enrollment. So I look at it, that plus one layer went away in private industry 25 years ago. So if I'm if I'm married and we have no children, he should take single at his place. I should take single at my place. Mm -hmm. No, now I, he's coming with me because it's cheaper for me to have him as plus one on mine. Mm -hmm. Well, that raises our enrollment and that raises our utilization. Mm -hmm. Now. Now um, I, I have, we have four kids. We're going to go to family plan. Now the kids are out of the house. We should both go back to our own employers and get single plans. Nope, we're back to frontier with the plus ones. Have you expressed that to them? I have. I, oh well, I'm not very popular when I say that. Um, and and I say, okay, if you want to grandfather everybody that's in there, I'm okay with that. If you want to make it employee plus one child because you're talking about a single parent with one child, I'm okay with that. But, the, it, but it's the, the plus one spouse, we're, we're raising our enrollment, we're raising our utilization, and that is something we could control. Mm -hmm. And you say we don't raise the rate commensurate to that? Oh, the, the, yeah, the rate goes up. The rate, but, but the rate, would, the rate goes up, but it adds <coughs> that layer. But not enough. Right. But it's still a perk when you're talking about people making $25,000 a year. Right? It, and, and so we have instructional assistants and food service workers who only work for their health insurance. Yeah, sure, right. Of course. That's it. Right. Sure. Yeah. There's a lot of people that they're in their job only for that reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just working there because that's why they're here. Right. And they haven't changed the plan, like uh, you know, if you you know, you, Rob, if Rob's comparing us to the GIC, the GIC just get rid of like half of their plans, and there was such an uproar that they had to put them back. Right. Wow. See, and and so when you're with the GIC, I mean, our cost, if he's saying ours is a little higher, but we have more control. Do you want unhappy employees? Well, and that, it's an interesting idea about the rural schools having 50% higher health insurance. It might have to do with what their spouse's well, line of work is in work more out. urban yeah. settings. Yeah. The yeah. health insurance is less of a concern. Sure, of right. And maybe the insurance market here is not as competitive as it is in uh, some Probably it is. You think so? Yeah, it's just fewer 
companies out here, I think, to offer cap and carry plans for insurance. For we have, and I know um, for in Western Mass, we have a severe shortage of um, neurologists. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that affects it because if somebody needs a, a neurology consult, they're going to Boston, where that that costs a lot more money. They're network. They're paying a lot more. Right. Stay on that is what it is. Um, one, one of the things that, that the Hampshire Insurance Trust does do very well is that they, uh, they're they very careful about who they let into the group. Correct. Okay, so um, that that's a good thing that they do. They're very careful about that, so that keeps rates down. Right. And okay. I've seen I've seen other people that have let, that have gone out to bid and um, with MIIA uh, and other companies. And what they're doing now, after they have had a three-year contract, they're trying to get into Hampshire Group because these companies will come in and lowball you for the first three years, and then they jack you the next. Mm -hmm. And then now you want to go back to Hampshire Group Insurance Trust, and you've got to get your utilization. And as John just said, they look at your utilization, and they say, hey, we don't want this too high. Yeah. So you know, I feel like our being with <laughs> being with Hampshire Group Insurance Trust, we're sort of in the same situation as we are with the transportation. Mm -hmm. It's like we're safe, but yet, our, it's, it's a risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on the operating side of the budget? Okay. Um, we got a letter. Um, today or the other day about um, a capital item that um, <clears throat> for a John Deere 1025R subcontact, some subcompact utility tractor. The cost is $35,000. Our share of that, Conway's share of that, would be $5,677, mm -hmm. uh, which is certainly to our advantage, it's only 16%. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> It's not exactly a John Deere. It is a uh, reasonable facsimile of that. We're mm -hmm. replacing. Well, I that I got corrected on that today. Oh. Yes. Yes. Right. Similar, similar, similar in size and features. features. But yeah. but I I did call today to find out because I can get a John Deere from <laughs> several different vendors. Mm -hmm. They're not just one vendor that sells John Deere. Mm -hmm. I can say John Deere. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So if it was yeah. like, you know, but you can't do it with like software, because if it's the only one place you can get it, Microsoft, yeah. then you have to do a, a, a sole procurement. Yeah. The same thing, I, I can say Crayola crayons because 10 different vendors can bid Crayola crayons for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. So, and then I also did find out because it doesn't see, exceed 50,000, we just have to get three bids. Right. So right. it's it, it could be, that's the max we think we're going to spend. What do you, what do you use the tractor for? Uh, we do all the manicuring of the lawns, um, all the athletic fields at the high school and at Hurley. Uh, you guys so well do, do cemeteries and other things too? Conway. And then you do subcontracts? And then you do Conway. All the tracks. <laughs> 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 how old is the track you want to replace? It's quite old, isn't it? I, we bought, I think we, old. is this the one that we bought used? No, this is the, the, this one, is the one that came with the building. It came yeah. with the building renovation. So we, we, it's very we, old. It's time to be a place. It's time. Yes. I did know how many hours. It turned over once, mm -hmm. but I don't know how many hours it takes to turn over. But we did, that question was asked by Bill Smith on the Frontier Regional yeah. uh, School Committee. It turned over once, so it's got quite it's a... It's a lot of years. <laughs> yes, yeah. they're out there. But, but we were clear, though, that we weren't fixated on John, it didn't have to be a John Deere. Yeah. And because there are Similar people, size and there are people that yeah. Yeah. you know think you're just paying a premium for yeah. the big right. green. Green right. paint costs money. Right. Uh, uh, and so we just wanted to be clear that we're not fixated on not the brand and on the <laughs> capabilities. Do we, do we need to vote on that? All right, so, so, so even though we have closed the warrant, we can open back up the warrant to put this on, and we can discuss this um, uh, if you want, if you have any more questions on it, or do you want to recommend it now? Yeah. Do you want to members? I make a motion to recommend the uh, warrant be opened up and included for the uh, replacement of the school lawnmower tractor. Second. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. So you guys are recommending that. Well, we can ask the carriers. All right. 
I, I will make a motion that we open the warrant to recommend an article uh, for Conway's share of a John Deere or similar uh, subcompact utility tractor. Uh, our share would be uh, at most 5677, is that correct? correct. At most? Okay. Is that the new language today? Because we did have one town request that we write the same, the same that every town's language appears exactly we, we, the same. We have, we have language okay. for it. Okay. Okay. We have language for the actual warrant. All right. Okay. Um, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I get to drive it. <laughs> Me, no. I got a 40 horse at home. I don't drive either. So. Ah, okay. <laughs> Okay. Did you want to go through the assessment piece? Are you good? We're good. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I think the uh, the summary page, bottom line, is, is basically. Great. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh. Yeah. That was all Dr. Oh. Terry. Yeah. Thank you guys. Did a good job. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. There. You're coming back, right? Uh, yeah. What for? Well, we, we have we to have, we have hear your, your recommendations. Oh, we got to go talk about it. Oh, okay. oh, 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 oh. I said, oh. All right, well, let's get to. Uh, they won't be they didn't finish it. Okay, um, the next item is um, Ron Hawks wants to resign as Deputy Fire Chief and reserve officer of the police department. Now, before we do anything on this, okay, mm -hmm. we, we, we've got to get, the, it's, it's the sentiment of the board philosophically that we don't have any, any problem with that, but we want to make sure our legal procedure is correct, okay? Okay, well, so, what, I don't know, you know the whole story. Okay. What the issue is, is Franklin County Retirement Board is pushing this because I have money in Franklin County retirement from previous uh, town deductions. Okay. And because of my age and state law, I'm required to withdraw that money. Okay, so you've discussed and, this with them. Yep. And, and what have they said? Discussed it with the treasurer and so forth. And the, the only problem is, is I cannot be employed by the town and withdraw the money. I have to resign so that I can withdraw the money. And then if you so desire, I can be reappointed. Now, okay, so there's a, there's a period of time, there's a period of time that uh, after you resign, you get the money out of the retirement yep. fund and then you no longer have an attachment to that. Right, that's correct. Okay, and then we can do whatever we want in terms of reinstating you to those that's positions. That's correct. When you did the same to my position, mm -hmm. as fire chief, there was a seven day grace period that had to be passed. I had to resign for seven days. Mm -hmm. At the end of the seventh day, they voted selectman, they voted the same night. Right, right. But they voted that in seven days you're reinstated as fire chief. Right. Is that what we and did for you? Yes, you did. 
And, okay. and actually, Jan talked to one of the girls at the retirement board this morning, and she was told, I don't know if it was off the record, but five minutes was was adequate. Was adequate. But I mean, can we find that? If you want to use a time what? period, yeah, what, know, like, like the seven days that Bob did, that's fine with me. I don't care. Um, let's 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 do this. We will accept Ron's resignations tonight, and at the next select board meeting, we will reinstate. Which is in one week. That's in fine. With which me. is in one week. Is that good for you? That's fine with me. And that works for the retirement system. Yep. Yeah, and because I, the paperwork I, is already in the mail. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, in in the terms, because we you know. Uh, you voted to Ron and uh, Robert to mm -hmm. continue yeah. past 65 right. at the yeah. same time. That did also stop their contributions right. to the retirement system. Right. So well, coming no, you get a rate. The actually the Franklin County retirement that was stopped quite a few years ago when they went from that to Ober. Okay, so because because of an age requirement, you have to take that money out. Right. So you have to resign to take that money in. Okay, all right. Um, we already did this for Bob, right? And we had no repercussions. Mine didn't have the my money didn't have to come out because I. I you transfer it to his There is a there is a I transfer it to a different options you can. But his is different. All right, so still the so, same principle. So what we'll do tonight, we'll accept um, Ron's resignation from these two positions. And then on next week's um, agenda, we will reinstate Ron to those two exactly. positions. Okay. Okay. Just to make it official. Can the fire department live without him for a week? Uh, we'll take care of that. Uh, I get a week off. You get a week off. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept um, the resignation of Ron Hawks. Uh, for the positions of deputy fire chief and police officer effective today as required by the franklin county retirement board uh, so that ron can withdraw funds uh, from that uh, retirement board do i have a second second all in favor aye, aye. okay Ron, if Thank you me. need a notarized statement to that effect we can do that in the town office for you all set. Sorry, they will. They will accept. Okay. Yep. You don't need any official paperwork. Good. And I already got got my signature on it. It's in the mail that I resigned as of today. Okay. Okay. So. And on next week's agenda, yep. we'll reinstate Ron in those two positions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. It is. And I've been I've been dealing with them for quite a few years yeah. on this thing. And yeah. it's, yeah. That, it's been there. But now they're because of I must have been good. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> you haven't got much in there, but uh, well, you've got police money you've got to do it. What things? You probably hold that those things. Not two grand. All right, do we, do we have finance coming back? Uh, yes, yes we do. We sound like they didn't. Yeah, we'll my other recommendations as we go along. Okay. Okay. Are we going to stay until they're done? What do you mean? We can. I mean, we're going to stay. We're not going to adjourn. Well, we're they're not coming back. No, in. We're that's, right. that's what I was wondering. No, no, we're. we're They've got to come back in and give us their recommendations for, for their everything. Uh, yeah. On the, on the we had we had a couple that we had decided. Yeah, no, we did all ours. Yeah, did we do? Did we think we did all ours? Didn't we? We did all ours. Yeah. We were waiting for them. No, no. The only recommendation we didn't do was on Ron's equipment because we asked for the. Right, we asked for additional information. Which that, this doesn't do a shit for what I'm looking for, but that's all right. He just, this is just carbon copy stuff they pull out of somebody's pocketbook somewhere. It doesn't say anything about cost savings, does it down? You no. It just talks about percentages. Nobody here says if you're doing this, you can save this on the county X amount of dollars. You know, what upsets me a little bit is, and, I, and, it's, and it's again in this one, I don't mind telling you. 
He hasn't got figures on this equipment. When you're going to purchase something on town meeting floor, you would have a written estimates of what it's going to cost you to do it. Sure. According to this, he hasn't got an estimate. I think it's good to explain what the goal is so that people in town know. Well, I always drop a town meeting floor and say, here's your estimates we got, folks. Yeah. And this is what we're asking for, because here's what the estimates are. He just just projections. He's making projections all the time. There's no reason why they can't call these contractors and say, you know, I'm thinking of replacing this one piece of equipment. I want your price. Take your own in trade mm -hmm. and give me your estimate. Now, and in writing. And it's good for yeah, until after the town meeting, but yeah. you hold that figure to that after that month. They'll do that for you. Mm -hmm. They'll all do it for you. That's where we always did it. That's my speech for today. <laughs> so you mean you don't like the fact that he says could be this much? Right. You should have a dollar and send it right to the penny paper on that. If a contractor you don't want to give him a price for okay, for two months, then you shouldn't be buying a piece of equipment for them. You should go to another guy. I used to do it in January. Get the cost estimates in January before I remember the select board mm -hmm. on budget hearing nights. On anything, even the fire truck, we did it that way. They were they were willing to put a figure together, right? What's gonna cost you? Yeah. 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 Granted, it may not be accurate with a trade, because if you take it something to trade, because you could smash it up after. Right. Yeah, that, I mean, they could put a, tin, uh, a statement in that covering that. I mean Come down to trade all you go off to the steroid land, you know what I mean? I mean yeah. They could just say No, well, that's why he's he's it, estimating it here. Right. They could put statements together in the paper so you know if if, if it appears that the, the piece of equipment you're trading in is still in the adequate uh, adequate uh, uh, condition it is now. Um, where's our again. finance committee? You know? Um, they would prefer to make, continue making their recommendations uh, uh, in their own meeting at this point. So if they finish recommendations, they will just communicate those to me. Okay. Sure. Um, and uh, I did want to go over. Will it be too late for us to do? No, no. We, we, we can. We still have recommendations to make ourselves. Mm, okay. Um, and I have a few notes on the on the on the budget we can go through okay. as well. Are they gonna, they're gonna be ready tonight? No. No, okay, fine. All right. But I do have some uh, recommendations. Uh, if you look at the uh, budget update, there, there's a few uh, items that I wanted to communicate. Um, so starting from last week, uh, we knew um, that we were getting more new growth. And that raised our excess levy capacity to 67,867. Right. Yeah. With that, 556.77 uh, just approved for the uh, Conway share of the replacement tractor for Frontier. Um, uh, I am no longer waiting for the Warren article. I did get that okay. just after I wrote this. Um, that uh, is also, that would be subtracted uh, from that 67, right. eight. Mm -hmm. uh, the treasurer's budget uh, rose just $91. Uh, quote came in, she underestimated it slightly. Okay. So no with those changes, the revised figure for excess levy capacity is 62,000. 99. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, uh, still uh, the general pay raise hasn't been uh, recommended um, yet. And that, just to remind you, would be 2.5% uh, would be 13,257. Uh, it's about $3,000 for each half a percent. Right. Yeah. So uh, if, if we did that as well, then the, total excess levy capacity would be 48,000 
842, which is still comfortable. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I'm certainly willing to go with the two and a half, recommend the two and a half. Is, did, they, did they vote on that last time? They didn't. No, I, they I have not, not yes. I have not. So we don't have to wait for their recommendation? No, we, not we finally approve it. Okay. We can, we can do it on our own. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve a two and a half percent general staff pay raise. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're kind of laboring over that point last week. And kind of yeah. And then the other items uh, that you had not yet recommended were the uh, equipment <coughs> um, replacement items from the highway department. And I included a, uh, a sheet for you about considerations that go into that because it is complex. And I know the it would be best if we had hard numbers. Right. That. Why can't we get hard numbers? Well, that's, that's, that's what the uh, piece that I handed out goes into. Uh, first, um, we don't know what the cost will be in five years. We don't know what exactly we'll get for the resale value. Each dealer makes their own deals. Mm -hmm. So uh, the last time when Ron got those, uh, the twin excavators, he got uh, uh, quite a good deal that we probably wouldn't get again. Uh, but it was a combination of the time of the year, uh, the inventory the dealer had in stock, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So those, those are things that we just can't know five years down the road. We can't say in five I years that, 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 that that's going to be the situation. So it makes it difficult uh, in that sense. And I do go over, um, I, I just explain those things in a little more detail. I did come up with a chart that showed um, that the cost to use, uh, in particular, the, the Volvo piece of equipment, um, it starts to rise uh, after four and a half mm -hmm. years or so. And mm -hmm. in the fifth year, it's still, it's still pretty low. Mm -hmm. And then it goes up after that. Yeah. So it, it's just a, it's a demonstration of what's kind of common sense about maintenance repairs that the longer you keep a piece of equipment, uh, the more likely it is for something to go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, these are at least all of the, the <coughs> principles that go into uh, what, uh, what the highway uh, superintendent's trying to do. And I laid them out as best as I could after talking with him and gave some examples that I picked up off the web. Mm -hmm. um, but again, there's, there's really no way of telling what the situation is going to be in five years. So uh, he was unwilling to you know, come up with a firm figure because it's going to be wrong one way or the other. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the exercise is a little bit fruitless in that respect. But at least identifying the principles that he, uh, that he used to um, make his request, I thought, was useful. Mm -hmm. okay. What do we have, three items? Well, there's there's two replacements. Uh, he has he has four items on the warrant. The first is the uh, is the borrowing for the bridge. Okay, uh, that's so, yeah. So well, that's that, that's and a big we recommended one. that. Yeah, we recommended. Yeah, and then and then there was the uh, the uh, the lift, which was a two to one vote. Right. And and these we were just waiting for um, figures, but in talking with Ron. Uh, he was he was not comfortable in coming out with figures just because of the 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 uncertainty involved mm -hmm. and and he thought it was much better to go on uh, you know the general principles you know the, the explanation of why it makes sense. That's fine. But can he than, uh, get us before we take this vote on the Kubota tractor and the. Volvo. The, the Volvo, Volvo excavator. excavator. Get us concrete figures as to what it's going to cost us to trade him. No. Why no. can't he? No, because it, he, he would have to be making a deal with a dealer to do that. Because it's, it's done, it's a negotiated price. I understand that. It's not like we do every year. I used to do them in January for the April meeting. But you think Ron doesn't do Get the dealer in writing from some dealer. Now. Don't wait down the road. 
He gave, these are just well, guesstimates, guesstimates he gives. This is for next year. This, is, this isn't for a few months ahead. This is for, well. Yes, it is. I suppose he could get it in July. I he don't can, know he can get it after, if it, if it, if it, yeah. how are we funding it? With what? At, uh, how, are you, how are we decide to fund it? What are, the, what are the motions for that? I don't have a copy of the motion. Have we done that yet? It's in the budget, it's in the motions. Was uh, it free cash? Uh, no, it's uh, it's uh, capital uh, raised capital appropriate capital stabilization. stabilization. Yeah, capital stabilization. So that's money that's already in the account. Yes. Yes. So he yeah. can purchase that right away after the town meeting. If it's in the account that we already get the money, mm -hmm. he can yeah. purchase it right after the town meeting. Yeah. yeah. So why can't he get us a figure? Um, I will ask him for that. Right. So, so so you're asking for a traded figure. I want the dollar and cents for no, the actual amount to replace that Kubota tractor and the actual dollar amount to replace the the uh, as Fluminy Antiquated. He should be able to get uh, get a quote from somebody. Uh, well, quotes. Multiple quotes, maybe you can. Mm -hmm. I will ask for that. Because he can fund that right away if it's, if it's voted yeah. that way. Yeah. If it's raised appropriate, then he couldn't do it to after July 1st. Right, yeah. And maybe that's what he was thinking. I didn't make it. Well, he should. I don't know. He hasn't been involved in that so, part of the process. So you don't want to vote on it until then? Right. He can get us in like another week, the figures. I would think he'd be able to come up with by next week. I will ask. Okay. Um, so those are, those are two items uh, that we haven't voted on. And I think we covered, and aside from Article 2. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, now that we have the vote for the two and a half percent, that's um, something that I can work into that Article right. Two, mm -hmm. come up with the final figures for Article Two, and we'll be ready next week for that. Yeah. Okay. So next week we have to wrap all of this up. Right. No. So no have her on get those figures. No delays. And we're going to get the uh, finance committee's recommendations next week as well, right? Uh, yes. That's what they're doing right now. Yep. Tell them okay. that's a deadline. Okay. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Let's hope. Got to give you. I thought this today was. Even, I, 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 they don't need to go to print. They don't. For another. They don't necessarily have to come in next week as long as they give right. you their recommendations. Right. right. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do we need we're to do right. anything else at tonight's meeting? Uh. I think we're all set. Right? I, think, I think we are. Okay. We'll get Article 2. I think we've done all the other money articles. Yeah. And, and the non-money articles, for that matter. Yeah. Okay. Um, if there's no other meeting to come before the board, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay.